you have somebody that works for you that you really like genuinely as a person. You give them an assignment. It's maybe to write a speech. They come back to you. You take a look at it. It's the worst speech you've ever seen in your life. Terrible. Can't even believe that somebody put this crap on paper and is expecting you to read it. It's terrible. But this is a person that you genuinely like, genuinely care about. How do you handle the situation? Sit down and stay tuned because in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can criticize someone to help them without damaging your relationship with them. So we've all had that situation where we had to criticize somebody. We had to give them feedback about something that they said or did, and it ain't going to be pretty. There's really no way to sugarcoat it. You got to sit down with them. You got to lay it down. You got to tell them how it is. You got to be honest with them. You got to tell them that whatever they did was unacceptable. It was terrible. So how do you do that? If you care about this person, if you don't want to offend them, if you want to remain on good terms with them, how do you criticize them? It's actually pretty simple. There are six steps to criticizing someone without damaging your relationship with them. So the very first one is to never, under any circumstances, criticize them publicly. Anytime you got to sit down with that person and have that heart-to-heart -heart conversation with them, you got to do it privately behind closed doors. The second thing is you got to preface it with some type of positivity. And that's not to say that you have to lie to the person or you got to butter them up. But what you do have to do is focus on any type of positive attributes that that person may have. Now, granted, when it comes to this particular situation, there may not be anything positive to talk about. Like, what they handed you or what they did could have just been a complete train wreck that there's nothing positive to focus on. So you got to focus on them as a person and you got to talk a little bit about the other areas uh, of the job or the way that they carry themselves that they are good at. So you got to preface with a little bit of positivity to let them know that you're not only paying attention to the bad stuff, that you are looking at the situation objectively and you don't only pay attention to the mistakes that they make, you pay attention to their successes and the things that they do well, but this is just a tough conversation that you have to have with them. Next is you have to figure out a way to make it impersonal. And again, this circles back to the second thing, which is really just being completely objective about it. You have to let the person know that this is not anything personal against them. It's not an attack on their character. It's not an attack on who they are as a person. It's just an objective point of view as to something that they did or how they performed at something and that you have to have this conversation with them and you have their best interest at heart as you're having that conversation with them. Next thing is, you have to supply the answer. So I can't tell you how many times when I was in the corporate world and I was managing 50 people and I had managers working above me and managers that I manage that manage their own groups of people, how many times people miss the mark on this one? They, somebody does something wrong, they sit down with the person, they rip them to shreds, they tell them how bad of a job they did, they tell them that they've never seen anything so bad, they tell them that what they handed in or what they did was completely unacceptable, that they can't believe that they did it, and then they don't give them the answer. They don't tell them the solution to the problem. So you gotta realize that that's not criticism. That's just abusing somebody, that's just picking on somebody, that's just bullying somebody. You're really just demeaning them. You're not helping them because criticism is designed to give somebody some feedback so that you can then work together to figure out how to fix the problem. If you don't have the answer to the problem, well, you can't at least make a suggestion to point that person in the right direction. Then you're not criticizing them. You are just simply ripping them apart and that's not going to do any good for anyone. Next thing is you have to, after speaking to them, you have to ask for their cooperation instead of demanding it. So instead of sitting down and telling the person, hey, you know, 
you did this and uh, you wrote this speech or you wrote this presentation. Here's where it's lacking. Here's what I think you could do better. Here's how I think we could fix the problem. I think if you did X, Y, and Z, it would be a drastic improvement. Do you think that you could do that? That's a much better approach than sitting down and saying, hey, listen, this presentation sucks. Here's where you screwed it up. Here's what you need to fix. Go and take care of it right now. Now, listen, if you're dealing with somebody that screws things up all the time or somebody that you don't like as a person because they don't have good people skills, so you're already at the point where you're kind of fed up with them and they got one foot out the door, that's a different story. What we're talking about here is somebody that you genuinely care about as a person, either because they always do their job well and this was just a misstep, or they are just a genuinely good person who made a mistake and you wanna point them in the right direction. So you have to ask for their cooperation instead of demanding it. If you are dealing with somebody that, like I said, already has one foot out the door and you're already fed up with them, then you can demand that they do what you tell them to do. That's a different type of person. The last one, very, very important. It's a little one, but it's an important one, is you have to stick to one criticism at a time. So if circling back to the presentation example, someone hands you in a presentation, you look at it, it's not good. It's, it's, it's terrible. It's probably the worst thing you've ever seen written in your life. You would delicately sit down with that person privately you layer them with a little bit of positivity about some things that they do well. You let them know that this is not one of those things. You let them know that, again, it's not personal. It's nothing against them. It's an objective criticism on what you're seeing. You tell them how you think it could be better, so you supply the answer. You then ask them if, if, if they agree with you and if they can follow through on what you're asking them to do, and then you leave it at that. You don't then tell the person, by the way, since we're here, since we're having this conversation, I also want to tell you about this other thing you screwed up two weeks ago. Very, very bad. People don't like to be criticized. I don't care how much people tell you, oh, I don't mind constructive criticism. I could take the feedback. People don't like it. We are emotional creatures. We are emotional first and logical second. And that, and that logical part of us is a a very, very far second. In other words, it's not like we're emotional and then we're logical. We are emotional most of the time. Even the most logical decisions that you make, like the decision to not jump in front of a moving bus, which you may think is a logical decision, is actually a very emotional decision. It's backed by the emotion of fear. So we are emotional creatures. And anytime you give somebody criticism, there's always that chance that they're not gonna take it well and you're gonna stir up negative emotions in them. So once you go through this process of doing it privately, layering the positivity, making it impersonal, supplying the answer, then asking for their cooperation, you gotta stop at that point and let them go do what they need to do. Do not bring up any other things that you feel the need to criticize them on. Do this, follow these six steps, and I can tell you that you'll have a much easier time delivering bad news to people. Now, if you like this video, make sure you like it, leave a message, and make sure you subscribe.